Hi, and welcome to the latest series of the Lean In Initiative of Videos. Today, I have two fabulous people with me that are involved in one of the Lean In circles in Dublin, uh, Richard Long and Anya O'Sullivan. And we're going to talk to you today about the working from home phenomena, um, how we find ways and means to help ourselves while we're working from home in lockdowns, how we found it benefiting our lives and where we would like to see this going. So Richard, I'll come to you first. You're very welcome. And thank you for joining me on the video initiative. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me on, Brida. Great, looking forward to hearing from you, Richard. And Anya, we'll say a quick hello to you. So Anya O'Sullivan as well. Hi, Brida, how are you? Great, super. Good. Okay, so back to Richard. Richard, will you tell us a little bit about your experience of working from home? What have you found mm -hmm. it to be? Is it anything like what you expected? Um, and, and how you have found it personally. Just to, to share with our audience, I suppose, the variation in, in all of our personal lives as we work from home. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, for the COVID perspective, I've been working from home since March, like most people. There was an element of working from home before that, but obviously not as um, consistent as it is now in terms that it's an everyday thing. So I think at the start, it was a little bit of a novelty that it was Monday to Friday, you were at home for the eight hours or how many hours a day you were doing. Um, and because everybody was kind of in the same boat as well, um, in terms of working from home, albeit in different circumstances, I think people were, it, like I said, it was a bit of the novelty at the start. Um, and I guess people not really understanding how long the COVID experience or the COVID pandemic was going to um, last for. So I think that's the way it was at the start. And progressively then, I think you fell into understanding how different situations were impacting different people. So for me, I, I live alone. So I was in a very different situation than a number of my colleagues, which ranged, which ranged from... Um, families to sharing flats with people to um you know all sorts of situations so i think as it went on that situation and how different people's uh, circumstances were definitely i guess showing a lot more in terms of your day-to-day -day interaction with people so you know as it particularly got over the summer period i think you definitely saw how it was impacting different colleagues i mean for me I live in London, so I was away from family. All my family were in, in Dublin. Um, you know, you're speaking to them every day, you're conver having conversations with them every day. And to be honest, I, I found it generally okay, um, but could understand that there were some people that were saying, I, I feel like I'm constantly in the office because I'm not switching off my laptop. I'm, I'm there first thing in the morning. And I think how I got around that was, was definitely putting a structure on my day. So, you know, the structure in terms of when I started, when I was planning to finish, there was situations when just the workload didn't allow me to finish in that. But when I was in the office, that was the case as well. So, you know, I think it was just evolving into that situation initially. Um, and then I guess it was just natural how you were able to adapt to it. Um, obviously, you had the benefit, which I think a lot of people were, happy about was the no commuting and um, you know you had extra time in the day you had that period of time that was usually going to the office and coming home and I guess I used that time to maybe go out for a walk or something before work or go out for a walk after work um, and use that extra time as, as best I could. Yeah uh, and I'd say many the one would have a similar story to you but yeah thank you for sharing that Richard. Um, recently on a conference, I heard someone say that it used to be working from home, but now it's living in the office. Mm -hmm. And I thought that is so true because I used to work from home for years and I worked remotely for 12 years um, and it was nothing like this. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's gone full circle. Um, so it's been, look, a different experience for everybody. And that's what yeah. this video is about, trying to make sure that we share all of our, our different scenarios yeah. with people so that we are all more aware of what yeah. people might have going on at home. Um, Anya, tell us about your experience with working from home so far. 
Okay, so I would have worked maybe two days a week before Brita and Richard from home and uh, that worked out quite well. I really enjoyed it. Obviously, uh, when we moved into, I suppose, the lockdown scenario for me, I had just, we'd just sold our house. So I'd moved from, I suppose, having my own space into a rented property with uh, childcare responsibilities for a four-year-old. My partner was going in and out to work still essential worker so um i was juggling the childcare and the work from home in a different environment and having have to move out and everything as well so that was the i suppose the initial challenge i didn't really have time to think about it just got on with it um and then moving uh we've now moved in with my parents so there's a uh, five of us in the house um nearly every day so it, that's a challenge in itself so I suppose for me it's very different in that I don't have a dedicated space Um, I kind of I eventually uh, figured out a routine whereby I'd move kind of between two rooms we kind of rotate and <laughs> um, so that's been that's been challenging and um, you know the the benefits I suppose are less rush in the mornings when you're trying to get people out of the house because I don't have to get myself out of the house um, and I suppose it, it helps to juggle some some personal commitments. I suppose you have the, the hours time at the end and the beginning of the day. I would have had an hours commute each way. Um, so that's obviously a benefit in getting extra time. Um, the difficulties for me are definitely um, the ability to have a hived off space for office versus work. So I'm in a room so at the end of the day my lap gets shut at the end of the bed kind of thing so that is kind of hard to separate out um but you know it's needs must uh we do have a house bought so i will be moving into my own space soon um so that's great but yeah so it's definitely been challenging when there's a number of people that ha you have to work around in a space, just even from a noise perspective or just the distractions, you know, somebody's on the phone and, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's juggling all of, of those things as well as then for me switching from work to parent mode. So I'll close the laptop at whatever, quarter to five, five o'clock, and I go straight to do crash pickup. So normally I would have had an hour's commute to, you know, kind of readjust to that and kind of shut down the work side and, and move into to the home side, but you don't have that now. It's literally, you're going from one to the other and that, that switch is, is quite a mental drain at times. You know, you kind of, it's, you don't have time to adjust. It's a straight from one to the other, you know? So that's, that's certainly been, um, I suppose, my experience. So up and down. <laughs> yeah, and look, that, that's exactly what I was hoping we would do here today. It's about sharing all of the varieties that's going on in our, our lives that probably were quite separate to our work lives before this, but now they are definitely not. They are front and center. Um, and then there's so many different people struggling with different issues at home as well. So as people leaders, we want to be really conscious of all of the different quandrums that can go on in all of our lives whilst we're all working from home. Um, so what would you say, Richard, what would you say has been the most difficult piece for you and how have you dealt with that? I think for sure it's been the lack of personal interaction. Um, you know, going into the office every day, you're around people, you had the various office banter with people, you just were able to go for a coffee, have a chat with people. And I think that for me, that definitely was the, the most difficult. Um, a lot of it for me was just to try and keep up some of those conversations with people. Um, you know, we're in an era now at the moment with FaceTime and Skype and, you know, Zoom, um, where you can, can continue to keep that face-to-face -face interaction, I guess. It, it's obviously going to be very, very different from meeting people in person. Uh, but that was definitely the element that, that I missed um, and still miss it because I haven't been back to the office. But for me, like I said, it was just to keep trying to continue to main that, maintain that dialogue with people um, and continue to, to reach out to people as well uh, to try and get a, a conversation with somebody. Yeah, um, I would say the same for me. I'm quite an extrovert and I, I missed the people energy 
of going into the office and all of the people that I would meet on the way to the office and on the way back. Um, what would you say, Anya? What was the most difficult bit for you and how have you got over that? Yeah, I think similar, but also just the being confined between the same four walls, obviously because I'm within one room for most of the day and I also sleep room. So it, it, is, it is hard. Um, so I suppose what I've done to counteract that is I, I just try and get out at lunchtime. Um, I wouldn't be the best at motivating myself because I tend, I, I can just work through lunches, but I've actually forced myself. I have, I have two friends that live nearby. So I try and actually schedule them in on specific days to go for walks together because we're right by the sea. So we're very lucky in that regard. Um, so I actually book them in kind of like for specific days every week. So to force myself to go out at lunchtime and it makes a world of difference just to get out because you get the chat, you're outside, you're getting the exercise, the fresh air, the bright, uh, you know, so that's, that's really helped me. And just from the interaction perspective, I've just kind of, because I've moved roles um, as well, I've, I've moved from one area into another. So I've kind of missed my colleagues that I used to see, but I just drop them a message and just say, catch up for coffee and stick in half an hour, maybe once a week with different people that I would have always engaged with. And maybe I've just made a point of trying to do that to keep the interactions going. So it's just like a, vir vir as you say, virtual coffee. Um, and yeah. to try and keep the connections going. That's, yeah. I suppose. The and and there, there's something like that that we have going on with our, within our team, which we did previously where it was a face-to-face, -face, but we do a coffee roulette. So within our team, there, there's various people. And to try and get people to mix, we, we yeah. the, this um, initiative was, was brought about. And we kept it on, came back where like that it's a virtual coffee once a month but it r rotates around different people and you know you, m you might be getting somebody who you really haven't met before or spoken to before and it's it's quite a good way to keep the office interaction even with outside of the team as well yeah and i love that idea Great. i was talking about buddy systems to different people across industry where we just randomly go to meet people across our companies or, or organizations or industries because I think that's the bit we're not getting so yeah I love the coffee roulette piece is cool <laughs> um for me Anya your scheduling thing works for me as well so I know that if I don't schedule catch-ups with people it doesn't happen so I I drive my diary and then it drives me um and I make sure then I do get those sort of catch-ups because I don't think you get those ordinarily if you don't sort of plan it correctly then they won't happen automatically you'll you'll end up talking to people about work all day but you won't actually have any of the informal catch-ups with people and they, they are the very important pieces of all of our, our work environments usually so yeah some super ideas there thank you both for sharing all that so the, the last question i have for you then is do you think that you will continue to work from home post COVID, what would you like your work life balance to look like? Richard? Yes, I think I, I will to an, to an extent. I think it's going to, and I think that's going to be for the, for the wider team as well. I think it may, whether it's two or three days a week or just the odd, there's, there's some weeks where you'll need to do the full five days, depending on what's, what the workload is. But I think that gives the, the right balance for people. I think, um, there, there has been a general push for, you know, various ways of working across various organisations in terms of, uh, I suppose, giving the, the colleagues the, the most adaptable work environment. Uh, and this has accelerated that, uh, this, the whole pandemic situation has accelerated that thinking. So I think for, for me, it would be, you know, two or three days a week, uh, on and off in, in the office, out of the office, working from home. Um, and I think that gives, you know, whether it's somebody in a situation like me who's, uh, who lives alone at the moment, you know, somebody who's sharing a flat, I guess for them, the big issue was if you're sharing a flat with four people and all four, all five people are, are working from home at the same time, where do you go? It also gives the benefits, I guess, for families that have childcare uh, needs where it's not as 
time pressure there it's not as rushed to take on your situation in terms of trying to get various um aspects done as well where it's not going to be as rushed so i think there will be a balance that will will play out and that's that's the ideal situation i think i'd like to see brilliant richard thank you and anya what way do you see yourself working going forward post covid uh, yeah i'd love to continue to work from home and um, obviously you know, when I'm in my position where I can hive off my own space and, and you know, that's, that's kind of where I'm looking to at the moment. Um, I think it, I will definitely, I would love to do three, maybe even four days a week. Um, or I know, you know, there's kind of uh, possibilities of, I suppose, team collaborations maybe on a monthly basis. So it may even work at being more than that. Um, and then uh, team collaborations maybe on a monthly basis or, you know, I, I know there's a lot of options, I suppose, out there to, to be looked at. Uh, from, personally, for me, I, I would be happy to continue working from home with the option, I suppose, of, of team collaboration because that's obviously very important. And things like training, you know, that, that's hard to do um, virtually. Uh, so, yeah, I think I'd definitely be open to doing um three or four days a week at home. It, it really does suit, it's, it's really useful, I think, um, for the juggle at home. And I, I would agree. I would say from looking at things in an aerial way, I can't believe that it took COVID to come and, and cause us all of this pain um, to get us to work as flexibly as we, we, we are now. And every country's the same and every industry mm -hmm. almost is the same. So we've all just been bolted about five years ahead of where we were. Um, and, and let's hope that we can manage to keep choice in the equation for everybody who works so that they can choose and manage diaries and manage lives better um, to balance work and life uh, going forward. And that we, we give people that choice. Choice is the big word for me. Because I think, I think what's evidenced over the last number of months is that it does work that we can do it essentially, you know, it's not, there hasn't been this, uh, obviously there's a, a, a pandemic going on, but there hasn't been this massive calamity where the work hasn't been able to be done. We've been able to adapt to it and adapt it quite well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's been fabulous having the two of you. Anything that you want to finish off on, Anya? Um, no, I think, I think that's, that's pretty much it. I think, I think another, um, I suppose, cohort of people are people that have, you know, carer, carer responsibilities. And I suppose that's different again to, I suppose, either of our situations, you know, if you're caring for an elderly parent or a relative or anything like that, I think that's probably another consideration, um, you know, that, that, that should be thought about out there and um, that maybe we haven't covered. But uh, no, that's about it, Brida. Thank you. Yeah, and, and just on the Lean In Circles, because Anya and I are in a lean-in circle together, we've been able to share each other's journeys all year and Richard has joined that as well. So let's remember as well the importance of communities and virtual communities in keeping each other supported the whole way through this because this is, I don't think it's just quite over yet. I think we have a few more months ahead of us next year. So for everybody watching, get into some kind of a virtual network. Ours is Lean in Ireland and you're more than welcome to join that. Um, but just to make sure that you keep sharing stories and supporting each other as we go. So that's it for now. Thank you to Richard and Anya for being such fabulous guests. Um, and we hope you enjoyed our sharing and our discussion today.